Welcome to this class in which we will introduce macroeconomics and just briefly introduce uh, national income accounting. Uh, macroeconomics is the study of the economy as a whole. It is different from microeconomics. Microeconomics was concerned with individuals, individual markets, individual consumers, individual products. Macroeconomics is to do with the whole economy taken as one entity for study. It deals with what we call broad aggregates. We talk about the balance of payments or the rate of inflation which is the change in all prices not just one price, not an individual price but all prices. So macroeconomics is dealing with aggregates. It uses the same style of thinking about economics issues as microeconomics. It still thinks about the economy in terms of moving towards equilibria and looking at forces that pull the economy towards balance. The traditional objectives of government policy are normally uh, looking at things like low inflation. That's considered to be desirable. The government would also try to get um, full employment. That's also desirable. As is a high rate of economic growth, a balance of payments equilibrium, and to get some fairness into the system so we don't have a few very rich people and the vast majority of the population living in abject poverty. So low inflation, well that's the rate of change of the general price level. Inflation is just the rate of change of the price level, the general price level. So it's all prices. It's an index for all prices. And it's desirable to keep it low as I said. Full employment, well, employment is a measure of the number of people looking for work but who are without jobs. There are various definitions to unemployment and indeed to full employment and it's, it's a matter of controversy over the years in economics as what exactly is meant by full employment. The high rate of economic growth, well, it's an increase in the real GNP, gross national product, GNP. It's an increase in the real GNP, and I'll explain real later, and it's an indication of the expansion of the economy's total output. We want more goods, we want more employment, we want more jobs, we want better standards of living, and how we get that is through higher rates of economic growth. And the government can use a variety of policy measures to um, affect the overall performance of the economy, including getting a higher rate of economic growth. For example, it could cut the, the, the bank lending rate, which may encourage companies to borrow money to invest. Invest means more jobs, more products, higher rate of economic growth. It's worth noting on, on this slide that it is controversial as well, because as we now experience global warming and we experience the impacts that we're making on the climate, on the global climate, um, it's argued by some people that a high rate of economic growth is not desirable. That in fact what we're doing is we're destroying the planet because we want more and more products and services which leads to more pollution, more global warming, melting of the ice caps, rising sea levels and so on and so on. So it is controversial but in the past it was certainly held to be something which was uh, desirable. Next, the foreign sector and we have to incorporate the foreign sector into our analysis, into what we call the circular flow analysis. We'll talk about that again later as well. Um, but we're increasingly living in a globalized world and we've always traded so we've always had imports and exports and of course the more imports we've got or the more exports we've got the greater the impact on the overall level of activity in the economy so we can't have an isolationist view, we can't imagine that we're the only people on the face of the planet we trade with many countries and we trade globally as do other countries and everyone has to recognize the interdependence in the foreign sector and the importance of the foreign sector. Um, so we have to recognize that we buy imports and people abroad buy our exports and 
that's the way the world is and it's important to integrate that into our into our models so domestic firms sell abroad and we buy from abroad abroad and of course the more we sell abroad the more jobs we will have in this country the higher our higher our standard of living so a high standard of living is seen to be desirable now let's talk about gross national product and uh, um, gross net product gross, sorry gross domestic product and gross uh, net product GDP and GNP gross domestic product well, is a measure of the output produced uh, in the domestic economy. It's the measure of output produced by our factors of production. We have four factors of production land, labour, capital and entrepreneurship. So it's the output produced by those factors and the more we produce the higher our GDP. Um, gross national product, GNP, that's a measure of the total income earned by domestic citizens. So it's not just uh, the output produced and located in the domestic economy but produced perhaps by British companies producing overseas. Um, so GNP is equal to GDP plus net income from abroad. Gross national product is equal to gross domestic product plus net income from abroad. Um, there are three measures of national output. Expenditure, and this is held to be the most accurate because of taxation arrangements, but it's the sum of all the expenditures in the economy. We say that Y is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus Z. Y in economics is income. We always write income as Y. That's standard. So Y is equal to C. C for consumption expenditure, what we spend, what consumers spend. Income is equal to what consumers spend plus I. I is investment expenditure, is what companies spend, plus G. G is what governments spend, government expenditure, plus X, X for exports, minus Z. And Z are, is made up from savings, imports, um, and taxation. Savings, import, and taxation. So, Y is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus Z. Y for income, C for consumer expenditure, I for investment expenditure, G for government expenditure, X for exports, and Z is the total of taxation, revenue, plus imports, plus um, savings. So that's our expenditure. Expenditure on our income side of the accounts, well, that's the sum of incomes that are paid to the factor services. So wages go to workers, profits go to entrepreneurs, and so on. And output, well, that's the sum of the output um, in the economy, the sum of the total output that we produce. If you think about these three measures, expenditure, income, and output, they must be equal. Uh, if you spend a sum of money purchasing a book, that sum of money when it's spent is the income for the person receiving the money, the bookseller. And what the bookseller has sold you is a book, that's the output, which is valued at £20 or whatever. So if you spend £20 on a book, and you receive, the, the bookseller will therefore receive £20, so expenditure is equal to income, must be, and the value of the book is £20. So expenditure and income and output are actually the same thing. GNP doesn't measure some things, um, and so we have to be careful. Uh, we need to distinguish between real and nominal measures for a start. Now, a nominal measure, well, consider salaries as an example. Let's say salaries increase by 5%. That's a nominal increase in salary. Salaries have gone up by 5%. However, when we consider real measures, if salaries increased by 5% and inflation was 7%, the workers would be worse, worse off by 2%. Prices have gone up by 7%. 
they've received an extra 5%, so they're 2% worse off. Their real income would have fallen, but their nominal income would have gone up by 5%. So there is a difference between real and nominal. So when we compare gross national products between countries, for example, we have to allow for the different rates of inflation. We have to also take account, of course, of the population. To say that a country has a gross national product of X trillion dollars doesn't mean anything too much to, to most people because if the population happens to be X billion, that means on average the people are very poor. So you get, might get a small country where the the GNP, the gross national product, is not very high but there are very few people living there and hence the people living there are very rich. And we have to remember that GNP is not a comprehensive measure of everything that contributes to economic welfare. Economic welfare, or, or indeed just welfare, is a function of health, the climate, the social conditions in the country, freedom, the ability to express your opinion, the ability to practice different religions if, if desired, and so on, law and order. Um, so there are many factors that contribute to our overall welfare, not just our economic welfare. And of course, the economics figure doesn't pick these up. Okay, that's a, a brief overview of macroeconomics and some of the issues. These will be expanded upon in subsequent classes. Okay then, so uh, thank you for watching.